Hello, I'm Dan the Upholsterer, and today I'll be showing you how to upholster a dining room seat in leather. The first thing to do is remove the screws that are holding the seat to the frame. So now that we have removed the seat, it's best to check the frame for any loose joints. Do this by flexing the frame on the front and rear legs, and also the seat to the back. If it's loose, then it will need to be re-glued. I'll cover this soon in another video. The tools we will need for this job are a pair of side cutters and a stapler remover. On this job I'm removing the calico carefully so I don't need to replace it because it's in good condition. The staple remover I'm using is a specialised tool which you won't find at your local hardware shop, but they should have something that will do the job. The calico is now removed so now we can get to the leather, lift the staples using the staple remover and then use the side cutters after to remove them completely. Now that we have the leather off, it's time to remove the foam. I'm doing it carefully as I'm not replacing it on this job. After removing the foam, I'm going to clean off all the staples in the wood. Now we are ready to build the seat. Today I'm using some Selly's Quick Grip with a layer of flock over it. The flock adds some softness and gives the seat a nice bulge. Just spray the adhesive onto the wood and let it dry till it's tacky. It worked nearly immediately here as it's about 36 degrees outside. After the flock layer is done, we can now attach the foam. Staple the foam on the top edge of the wood, but only staple through the bottom half of the foam so you won't leave indentations in the foam. Staple the back first and then the front, and then add more foam in the sides if you want some more build up as I did. The next step is putting on your Dacron. 
I'm using 200 gram Dacron and in this case I'm using two pieces of scrap that I had left over which is fine on this because you won't feel the joint under the leather. If you're using fabric then I would definitely use a full piece that's big enough to go right way around. Just measure with a tape measure just as you would for fabric. Now we get our tape measure and we measure front to back and side to side. Make sure that the measurement is taken from the widest points of the seat or you will be short on fabric. I allow an extra inch over both edges when measuring but if you feel that's not enough you can go up to 2 inches on each side. Now it's fabric time. I'm using leather on this and first thing I do is check the leather for flaws and decide which part of the leather will be best for this seat. If you're using fabric, always check for flaws in the fabric before you cut. Here's a tip for you, always mark your centers, it will make things a lot easier for you in the long run, especially when using patterned or striped material, but even on planes it's important because if you cut fabric with minimal allowance like I do, you don't want to be wasting time because you didn't center the material and not have enough on one side. Now it's time to put the fabric on. Line up your front to back centers and use temporary tacking to hold it in place. Just ease the material over and put the staple in on an angle so it's easy to remove later. You'll need to take them out and put them in several times. Keep doing it until you have got enough tension on the fabric that it doesn't crease when you put weight on it. But don't over pull it either or it will be hard to get a nice smooth finish on the edges. So now that we have finished our temporaries, it's time to finish off. We do that by easing the fabric over the edge and then stapling nice and neatly across the front and back. Then we turn our attention to each side, leaving the corners to last. Once we start the sides, we start by easing the fabric to the corner and the first staple is put right in the corner with the following staples going diagonally outwards, then repeat on the other end. Now we trim that excess fabric out of the corners and prepare to finish them off by folding the rest over. You will want to pull the fabric until there are no creases over the edge that will be seen once finished.
So here I have made a slight mistake, but it's nothing I can't fix. Those creases may have been caused by a number of things, being maybe I pulled the leather a bit too far to that side or maybe the leather just stretched a bit too much. Either way I need to fix this. I do this by releasing some staples and then easing out the creases over the distance. The back of this seat is a bit more tricky because of the cutout in the wood. So firstly we cut to the centre of the corner and then pull on both sides and staple off. Be careful that your material doesn't tear at this point. After that's done we cut out the excess and fold over the edges again without having creases over the edge. Now that we have finished our corners, it's time to trim the excess off to keep it looking clean. Then we can put on the calico to finish it off. After that's done, we just put the seat back onto the chair and we are done. Those holes I just pointed to in the wood are breather hole. They are required on seats like this one, with a solid wood base and upholstered in leather or vinyl. If yours doesn't have some, make sure you drill them before you start building the seat. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video informing, please leave a like and a comment. And if you would like to see more of my future videos, please subscribe to my channel. I have plenty of projects that I'm keen to share with you all in the future. Thank you.